What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. My name is David. I'm an engineer turned real estate professional in the state of Texas. Doing deals all across Texas actually. So if you ever need any help, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe if you like the channel. I'm honestly using this channel to document my whole process going from really transitioning as an engineer all the way to a top sales agent in Dallas, Texas. So if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. Today we have a jam-packed day actually. Um, actually, it's not that bad. Um, so we had church this morning. Um, shout out to Pastor Madhu over at Social Dallas. Uh, great sermon today. And so now we're going to be heading over to meet with a client and her mom. So she's actually building a house um, out here in Dallas uh, with Madame Homes down in Mesquite. And uh, she's building one of those like three-story level type tower homes, but it's actually a single family home. So she's very excited. She's been... Uh, She's been checking on the house every Sunday to make sure everything is going good and to plan. So she's actually gonna be there with her mom today. Um, they just got back from like the Cayman Islands, I believe, for their birthday. So I'm gonna get to meet the mom this time, say hello. And then right after that, then we're gonna be heading over to another client who drove down from Houston. So his dad is a pastor out here in Dallas and um, got connected to my mom and then um, his son exactly who I'm going to be being today. Um, it seems around the same age as I am, uh, have a similar interest based on our conversations. So I think that one should be a good one as well too. At least it's more like relatable and I can talk like level set with them a little bit. Um, so yeah, pretty jam packed that day today. I'm going to take you all along with me. I probably won't record every single thing, but just enough for y'all to be able to kind of track along and see how this thing goes. But yeah, feel free to reach out. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And yeah, see y'all on the way. Um, now that I think about it, it's also been a while since I've vlogged. So I guess I'll catch y'all up on a couple of things that's going on right now. So the Highland Homes client that I spoke about last time, they are currently under contract. I'm not sure if I updated y'all on that, but they're under contract right now and they've already paid their earnest money. The home is going to be finished in May. So that one's good. Um, I would have already posted the Salina property on YouTube. So that client, their their build date or a build completion date got pushed out from May to middle of July. So that one's um, that one's gonna be completed in July. The reason why it got pushed out was because they had just got approvals from the city of Salina. Now, if you're somebody who's looking to build in the city of Salina, from what I've heard, they are back. They are backed up. And builders have to go through it where they'll send the plans and everything to the city to get approvals, permits approved, all those types of things. But with the resources that, that the city of Salina has, uh, they don't have enough to keep up with the amount of demand that is there. So, you know, a lot of people are paying for it. I, th I want to say I want to say the guy told me he's waited like twice the amount of time we usually take. So it's pushing schedules out. And then on top of that, too, whenever you go and you want to, whenever you call the, um, the city to come out and check on the property, do inspection and stuff like that, that if they even see anybody inside the house, they're going to leave and say, oh, failed. So it makes the process a lot longer. So, yeah, that, that kind of, that's the whole situation in itself. But yeah, so that's the Prosper client. I'm trying to think of who else do y'all know about. Oh, the landlord client. The landlord client is doing well. We have three applications in. Uh, two of them are Section 8. One of them is a regular tenant. They're going to go with Section 8 because they get guaranteed income. Client looks good. The property's not the best, so I think Section 8 kind of works well there. The only thing is we'll just have to screen them a lot better. So right now we have one applicant that's going through the screening process. And then once that's done, they will be able to um, get them approved and get them inside the house. So he's still going to be making pretty good money on it every single month. I think it's better than putting it on the market right now, especially with the condition of the property. But yeah, so that's that one. Uh, who else do I need to update y'all on? Oh, McKinney Klein, McKinney Klein. McKinney Pl Klein is doing good. She actually found a house that she liked. So we, can do blah, blah, blah. we went back up to the community. Whatever that last Tuesday of January was is when we went out there. So she looked at a plan that she liked. It was above budget. I told her it's going to be above budget. We're not going to hit your $2,500 a month um, payment target. And then she was okay with it. I think that's the space that it gives her is enough. Yeah, it'll be okay. So right now she's going through the pre-approval process. 
with their lender. We're waiting to hear back. I think she submitted it on Wednesday. She's supposed to hear back Friday. So we're hoping by Monday that um, everything is good to go. We can go and contract on the house. Um, there's only one more plan left. So I am hoping nobody else is fighting for that property as well too. I sent an email to the sales consultants yesterday and none of them replied. So yeah, we're gonna see how that one goes. But hopefully nobody sweeps in and takes it. Who else do I have that's in the pipeline? Oh, so I have some, some, some more people coming this week. So I have a client from Houston that's coming in this week that's actually a referral from the Highland Homes client. Yeah, they're a referral from the Highland Homes client. They're coming up to Dallas, looking around seven fifty to 800000 in houses. He has a couple of uh, builders that he wants to look at, so I'm going to go up there with him on Tuesday and Wednesday. Then I also had a consultation with a couple of clients last week as well, too. The thing with consultation clients, I probably won't mention those because those haven't been solidified. I don't know. Just let me, well, actually, you know what? Let me know in the comments if y'all want me to include clients that I'm just talking to as well, too, because a lot of times as agents, we'll be talking to clients and they may not be, they may not be ready to buy a home. Let's say it like that. They may not be ready, but a lot of them just want to have that conversation and kind of go through the motions and kind of get used to the process. Um, that happens a lot. So a lot of times, whenever I'm talking to clients, you never know where it's going to go. That's the whole, I don't want to say beauty of the game because it's, stress, it's stressful sometimes because that's like, man, especially when, once you get to the point to where like you're showing them houses and things like that. And it's like, okay, like, all right, maybe you're just here to just look around. You can kind of tell who's kind of serious and who's not. But then again, honestly, you never know sometimes too. Like out of five, I'll probably guess three right. So that's just like the daily life of a realtor, honestly, because you just never know who's going to be, what's the word I'm looking for? Who's loyal to you or not? Which is why it's important to kind of build something like an audience. I think that's one of the good things my mom has done um, is that she's built a, a huge community around her Instagram following to the point that people are so loyal to her um, and will still say, I don't want the $10,000 from the builder I'd rather go with you. There's a, there's some people out there like that. No, money is not, I won't say money's not the issue, but they value her their relationship with my mom over the $10,000 that they're gonna be receiving from the builder. And that's a lot, like even, but that's my mom, that's a lot for somebody to do just because it's like, man, these people are giving me free money. But at the same time, what's the worth of $10,000 with a great relationship with somebody? Money can't buy a lot of things, man. So. Yeah, big respect to those that have rocked with my mom, even despite the amount of incentives that a lot of these builders send out or give out or offer up to other uh, to people. Yeah, let me know down below, like, what do y'all want to hear updates on? Oh, I had a video on TikTok that hit 1.5 million views. So basically what happened in Dallas. So I don't know if y'all know, if y'all are on internet, you should know about Keith Lee. Keith Lee is a, he's not a food critic, but he's a food critic. And so basically he blew up on TikTok a couple of years ago just based off of trying people's food. And his whole target was, he targeted restaurants that didn't have the marketing. But he'll go there to see, is this, is this business failing because of their food is not good or because their marketing's not good? That's his whole situation. So is their food, is it just the food that's just trash and that's why nobody's there? Or is it actually good food and you know they just don't have the marketing so he'll post his review on tiktok and he'll get tons of interactions tons of views and so it really turned into like a marketing thing for a lot of these restaurants and so he's been doing that all around dallas or no all around vegas that's where he's at or that's where he's from he started doing that all around vegas so it built a huge following as interviews with news outlets and all these different things he's huge now and so what he started doing now was a food tour. Now the food tour was going all around the states. So from Vegas, he went to, I don't know the order, but from Vegas, he went to New York. He went to Louisiana. He went to Houston. He went to California. I think he went to the Bay Area. Um, now when Keith Lee goes to these places, 
a lot of times he'll give honest reviews and say, hey, this is what I think about the food. I like this. I like that. He has his own preferences. He doesn't eat dessert. He doesn't like shellfish. He's just a regular human being. Oh, also, he went to Atlanta, too. Forgot to mention that. How could I miss that? But, yeah, he went to um, all the different places, and he'll give honest reviews on, hey, how's the customer service? How's the food? As a regular person, you know, would I try this spot? And a lot of times, you know, as you would think, since he's famous now, you would think, okay, wouldn't people want to give him the best service if they knew he was there? But the thing about Keith Lee is that a lot of times he'll order his food off of DoorDash, or he'll call and pick up his order so people don't know that it's him. So they'll be observing like how to answer the phone. They'll observe. Oh, all right, so I'm gonna fast forward all the way to the situation. So the situation that happened in Dallas, I'll make sure I'm going the right way, exit on four. All right, so the situation that happened in Dallas was he went to a food spot called Sweetly Season. Now Sweetly Season is a food truck out here in Dallas. I've personally never heard of them before this whole situation happened. Um, season, um, they tagged him, they got him to come over there. And so Keith Lee came over there, did his review, gave him a great review. And then after the review was done, they posted it and they got a lot of traction. So Keith Lee, when Keith Lee was there, I'm guessing word got around and people started lining up at Sweet Lee Season basically saying, hey, Keith Lee is here, boom, boom, boom. Long line at Sweet Lee Season, okay? Now Keith Lee does his review. He says, thank you so much for everything. The food was great. You know, in addition to the food being good, what I'm also going to do is give the barber a thousand dollars. So there was a barber there at the line cutting people's hair. It was not free. He was charging forty dollars to cut people's hair because people were in line. So one of the girls that helped bring Keith Lee to Sweet Lee Season, her brother, her name is Sherelle. Her brother was the one that was out there cutting hair. And so Keith Lee said, you know what? I'm gonna give the barber a thousand dollars for cutting hair so that he could give everybody else free haircuts while they're here. Boom, that's one thousand. He gave another lady of the braider. I think he gave a thousand yeah, to the braider. There was a girl that was on braids there as well too. Gave a thousand dollars to her. Gave two thousand dollars to the truck owner. Okay, two thousand dollars. Like two thousand dollar tip to the truck owner. Eight hundred or so for the rest of the people in line. So he said, hey, I'm gonna add 800 on top to cover the food for all the other people in line. When Keith Lee left, the lady who received the money, the owner, maybe only three people got free food and she charged the rest of the people. Is that not crazy? She charged everybody in line. Not only that, when Keith Lee gave the money, he gave it all as a bunch to the truck. The truck owner did not split the money. She kept everything. She did not give it to the barber, the braider. She kept it all to herself. $2,000 she kept to herself. Now, if you know anything about Keith Lee, and you know anything about Keith Lee's audience, they're very, very strong. Their audience is cult-like. So when something like that happens, something greedy like that happens, and it's at a result of Keith Lee, who has been somebody who has done a lot of good in the community and bringing light and marketing to a lot of minority restaurants. People are gonna say something about that. And now she's at the point where she wants to give the money back, but right now, your name is already tarnished. Your name is already tarnished. The thing is, the thing that she failed to realize is that you have one shot at getting a huge marketing push from something like Keith Lee without spending that much money. At the end of the day, this is still marketing. This is still something that you would pay somebody to do. If you wanted to go on the news and reach people, you'd have to pay them for it. If you wanted to go get featured on a big social media website, you would have to pay for that sponsorship. Keith Lee is coming to you with, man, he has millions and millions of followers to market your property. I mean, not property, to market your restaurant for free. And you squander that, the one opportunity to get you squandered that and the opportunity that you had for people to recognize your brand as maybe good service or good food, you squandered that. And now they see you as, oh yeah, sweetly season, those are the people that were being greedy. Now look at, and, and that's the thing about branding as well too, is that you have one opportunity to leave an impression on people. Even if you wanna try and double back and give the money back to her, you've already tarnished your name and your business name. And it's crazy because I'm sure that she worked very hard to build up her business but because 
of greed because of two thousand dollars you just messed up everything she she posted a video that she was in um she was in a place for what three hours or so and nobody came and they're just like man it's it's crazy but, but yeah i'm about to end this we just got to the property i'm about to show you the property and then let's go inside but yeah actually let me go through the back pause and we're back again y'all have seen this place before so no need to no need for another introduction oh it looks like i'm gonna be turning this place into a uh They're gonna be turning it. This used to be the modern home, so they're gonna be turning this into a home that somebody can buy. All right, so we're gonna be taking a look inside this house. <clears throat> so a quick update. I'm gonna have to leave very soon, but as you can see, the walls are up. We're gonna do a quick run through. <clears throat> Cabinets are in. And this is gonna be a Mad at Me home. <clears throat> it's gonna be her study. Shower, huge shower. And you can't see a huge closet as well, too. <clears throat> but yeah, so whew, I didn't catch my breath. Oh, wow. Let me cut. Let me get my breath. So yeah, so she actually came with her mom today mom was very cool um and that she came with her cousin i believe who's also interested in getting into real estate so had a good conversation with all of them time for like all of them to look at the house together also for me to meet them as well too <coughs> but yeah this real estate thing is <clears throat> all about relationships all right i'm about to put the address in my cartwright branch all right so we're gonna be a little bit late so i'm gonna text my client let them know that we're gonna be a little bit late but yeah, as I was saying, um, this relationship thing is all about relationships and building relationships with people. And <clears throat> today was really an opportunity to meet the mom, build a relationship with the mom as well too. Just get to know like a little bit more, more about my client because I need to come up with a gift for her, number one. But then number two, um, I don't wanna just be a realtor. Like one of the things I was actually thinking about um, yesterday, cause I went into a, like a rabbit hole about uh, community and how to like build a community. I feel like that's gonna be the next step for me when I look at like my real estate journey. And I was just thinking like, how would I be able to build a community of people behind me? And a community to the point where they felt value add because there's so many people i can reach out to there's so many different audiences i can tailor myself to and that's what kind of made it hard about starting this youtube channel because it was to the point to where it was like man there, i'm so many different things that i could tailor to different audiences i could talk about engineering like what my life was like in engineering i could talk about transitioning from engineering to real estate i could talk about real estate i could talk about investing um investing for teenagers investing for people just getting out of college. Um, I could talk about people that are in real estate. Like there's so many different avenues, but it's like, which one really just makes the most sense to where I feel like I have a competitive advantage and I can, and I can add a bit more insight than most people. And that's actually what I've been toying around with this for these last couple of months, um, because it's just like, man, there's so many different audiences I can care to. How, do, how am I gonna build a community of people that I want that will 
feel value added. I don't know. I just feel like the time that I've been in like a community, it's always been, the experience has always been a lot better for me. Like imagine like being in a community of like homeowners, like, but not like in your neighborhood, but like other homeowners that went through the same agent. I don't know. Like, would that even be something that people would want to do in the first place? Like, where's the value add in that to begin with? So that's what I'm thinking about right now is, now how do I build that like keep the lead type of audience to where people keep coming back to me and want to see what else I have to offer. And it's not even just from a point of making money or getting sales and stuff like that, but just providing value. Like if you, I feel like whenever you focus on money, you won't make money. But whenever you focus on helping people, you make money. It's one of those things where you're compensated for doing well. You're compensated for doing good for others. And even though you shouldn't have the mindset of, I'm doing this so I can get something back in return, I feel like if you have the mindset of, I'm doing this just to help somebody, and everything I get back is just a plus, I feel like that's the better mindset to have, only because, honestly, you're gonna be disappointed a lot too. Like even aside from the fact that, hey, I'm here I'm trying to get money or whatever the case may be, you're gonna be disappointed because it's not gonna be the results or the feedback that you thought you would get. So whenever you go into a situation genuine, I feel like that's the better situation that you're in because it's genuine. It's not like you expected anything from it. And if you do get something from it, it's extra. Like for example, <clears throat> I remember the first gift that I received as an agent. Um, and honestly, I always just thought that the commission was enough. Like, I mean, as long as I make money off the commission, I'm good, you don't have to worry about me and that, that, that. And then what I usually do for my clients, I'll get them gifts that close in. The first time I received a gift from a client, like, I won't say, I'm not emotional. Let me, let, me, let me just start off by saying that. I'm not an emotional person, but it caught me by surprise to where it was like, wow, like, you really thought about me. Like, I didn't even think, like, this was like a thing. Like, people will give you gifts at the agent. Like, people know that you get paid as an agent. Like, that's common knowledge. But... For somebody to still go out their way to get me a card, get me a bottle, get me a gift, whatever the case may be, it's just like, damn, that's very thoughtful. And although I did get paid for the transaction, it's still the fact of I didn't have that expectation. What they mean, my friends always say, the expectation leads to disappointment. If you expect somebody's gonna do something and they don't do it, you're gonna be so disappointed and you're going to think, wow, like, after all I've done for this person, you know, after all I've done for this person, man, they could have at least done this or done that for me. No, you can't have expectations. You can't put your expectations on people because people don't have the same mindset as you. People don't have the same perspective as you. So if you think that you're going to do something for somebody and expect something back in return, you're in for a rude awakening because a lot of times people aren't really thinking about you like that. So, yeah, don't have expectations whenever you're doing good for people and it will turn out even better for you. Do it out the genuine kindness of your heart if you feel it to be, uh, if you if you have it on your heart to do so. If you don't have it on your heart to do so, don't do it. If Don't do it if you're, well, if you're expecting something back in return. Like just do it just because you want to do it. And life will be a lot better for you. It won't be, you won't be breaking up friendships and things like that because shit, you didn't expect it. And it's e and not even just and just to add that to that too, it's even better when you don't expect it. It hits you. It hits so much different when you don't expect something and you get it. It's just like getting proposed to. Like obviously, y'all been together for years or whatever the case may be. But the time that he surprises you in that venue with all your family and everything like that. Hold on. Hey, what's going on, man? Hey, how you doing? Um, I, I was coming. Oh yeah, hello. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh uh, yeah, I was coming because uh, I I came to one of the locations, but I thought I thought it was the car right, but it ended up being the River Ridge. River Ridge, River Ridge. That was the one with Century. Um. <laughs> no, River Ridge is Taylor Morrison. Oh okay, that's not too that's not too far. They're like I want to say they're like five minutes apart. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, they're not too far. Yeah, I'm on the... Okay, it's the car... 
Oh, go ahead. The car right is the car right is down the street. Yeah, it should it shouldn't be too far from where you're at right now, at from River Ridge. Okay. Yeah, they're both in Granville. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm on the okay, way now. Gotcha. Yeah, I should be like maybe there in the same 20 minutes. So I'll be there in like 20. Okay, that's. Yeah. All right, got it. Yeah. All right, man. See you soon. All right, see you soon. All right, bye. That was the client that we're meeting up with today. Um, so it's not far from where we're going to be at. So we should be fine. Yeah. All right, I'm dancing, but deep down we're lost. <laughs> so um, we're trying to find a Cartwright Ranch, DR Horton, which is the community that we're trying to go to right now. But they're not popping up on, like, you know how most communities have like a my business page on there so that you can easily access their address and things like that these people don't have it um, and then when you call them they don't answer the phone and then on top of that too um, both Apple Maps and Google Maps are giving us different locations so I'm gonna try and work that in the background so I just called my client to let him know that hey let's just go back to the Taylor Morrison River Ridge so that they can look at something at least right now. And then in the meantime, while I'm working this whole issue with DR Horton, um, they can be looking at homes and at least doing something instead of just driving. Um, instead of just driving anywhere and not really taking a look at anything. So I think that'll be a better situation for them, so. Light on the other side. We're about $1,000 here. Once we complete all phases. Mud pit here? Yeah, there's a pit. Okay. And it's tied to the lot size, so all of them being the 50 foot lots, we're about 349 a month. Okay. What's so the tax rate? 3.182. Yeah. Everything's about 3.1. 3 it's all roughly the same in this area, yeah. especially when you're looking at like Lenar down the road and all the rest of them, they all kind of mm -hmm. tie in. But if you're looking at a home that's uh, two, like one next door right now, I mean, obviously right now is not time to go, but it's 275, um, roughly 275,000. I sold for 335 last month. So I got like 60,000 discount. Mm -hmm. This kind of, I had 25 homes, I only got like four left. Mm -hmm. okay. But um, a house like that, you're probably looking at about 2,100 bucks a month. If you're doing FHA, three and a half percent. Our affiliated lender right now, we're offering, offering 10,000 towards closing costs. And so we actually, we look at more of the financial piece of it versus, you know, a washer, dryer, refrigerator. So most of ours are usually structured on the back end as far as payment. And that's what people really want to look at each month is, what is my payment going to look like? Mm -hmm. and so. YouTube so we're back um, so we're gonna be heading over to the next location but wanted to give y'all an update on what they thought about it so overall rating for Taylor Morrison for these clients was an 8 out of 10 um, they're not looking for all the bells and whistles and uh, we were just joking around about the fact that everybody is so different because I had just came from a client who wanted to be a little bit closer to the city she wants the nice finishes and then I come over here and you know they're total opposites so that's the funny thing about real estate is that, or at least being a real estate agent, is that you get to work with so many different personalities, different flavors, not flavor. Wait, what did you just say? But different favorites and interests and what they don't like and what they do like and try to play matchmaker. You're, almost, you're really like a matchmaker, to be honest, especially when you're working with buyers. You're essentially a matchmaker, just hearing all their preferences and what they're looking for and trying to find the right home that fits exactly what they want and also dealing with the reality that a lot of times everything that they're looking for 
is not going to be there and trying to let them know that, hey, especially if this is going to be a first house and you don't have the budget for it, you're not going to have everything that you want inside the house. So getting people over that hump is probably the biggest hurdle dealing with um, buyers, especially newer buyers, because, you know, they want something really nice. They want to feel cozy inside the house, which it makes sense. Like, why not? Like, why wouldn't you want to be cozy and satisfied with your house that you paid a lot of money for? But the reality is, is that the way home prices are going right now, even the most basic homes are a bit expensive. Like, they cost a pretty penny. So I 100% feel what most people are going through. Oh, so their official rating for this specific property was an eight out of 10. So they really liked everything that um, that they had to offer. Uh, they liked the finishes, they liked, the, they liked everything. There were no complaints. The only complaint was maybe a bigger, I think they said a bigger bedroom, a bigger bathroom, and that was pretty much it. So they're not too picky. Um, they're you're looking for a four bedroom, well, they're looking anywhere between a three and four bedroom, honestly. Um, four bedroom would be the preference. Um, they're looking to be moving probably the next couple of months. Actually, no, they're going to be moving next year. But since they're down here, um, I was like, you know, might as well just take them out and see what they think, build some rapport. And then hopefully by the time that they're ready to come out and take a look and buy a house, that they'll uh, reach out to me again. Um, since we're looking at inventory homes, we're, we are very early into the process. But if they are able to break their lease, and let's say they're offering, a builder's offering a lot of incentives, it might make sense to break the lease. The baby's not due till June. They can close and sign today, or not close, but they can sign today, close in 30 days, and be moved in, you know, by the time the baby is ready. But everybody's timeline is different. Everybody's, everybody's, yeah, everybody's timeline is different. Everybody's comfort level is different. You know, I've had people move like, when the baby is about to pop like literally and then there's some people that you know rather not do it so everybody just a little bit different and part of kind of being an agent is adjusting to everybody's different preferences and what they would prefer and just being of service to them that's all you're really just doing because i mean being a real estate agent you're essentially a service person a service based business there we go one of the things that my parents preach a lot in a brokerage and they, the thing that i've been trying to like hammer for them to understand as well too that the client experience is the most important part because they're going to be the biggest advocate for you whenever it comes to more business and keep your business going. I mean, my parents have been getting this, having, my parents have had this business for over 20 years. And so in order to continue that business, I mean, we have to, we have to close deals. We have to make money. We have to hire people. We have to fire people. We have to do all these different things. And so that comes with more business. So the more, the better you treat your customers, the bigger your community, the bigger the advocacy for your brokerage. And I, I personally think it's going to grow. I haven't seen it with my own two eyes yet, but I mean, just how people are, I think that's the best way to go about it. If you treat people good, people are going to treat you good. And that's just, you know, reciprocity. But yeah, so I'll, uh, I'll pick the camera back up when we get back to the spot or we get to the new spot. We're going over to Century Communities over in Middlefield Village. We're going to be taking a look at one of their floor plans, a four bedroom, two story. The one, this is the one that they specifically like, the first one that they liked. So we're going to take a look, and then I'll pick up the camera back again later. Peace. All right, so we're headed to Middlefield Village. So community, community's a little bit different. We're going to go in there and see what they have to offer. And then we go from there. So yeah, this is a little bit older community. You can hear the roosters, actually. I know you didn't like the white cabinets, but what do you think about um, this house compared to the last one? Another one more? Like this one more? No. Another one more? Okay. YouTube, so we're back in action. <clears throat> well, not in action, we're closing up actually. So, uh, we just finished wrapping up the showing. So, we only looked at two builders today. 
we looked at the tra ugh, not Travis Ranch. We looked at Taylor Morrison, and then we looked at Century Communities, uh, which are two builders that are more for the starter home community or starter home demographic, however you want to call it. Um, and so we looked at the one over in Crandall. They really liked that one a lot, where they rated it an eight out of ten for everything that's there. And then when we went over to Century Community, which had a lot more space, a lot more yard space, a lot more acreage, they didn't like that one. And the reason why they didn't like that one is because even though it offers a lot more square feet, they don't utilize the space as best as they could. The, the ceilings were eight feet high, I believe, eight to maybe nine feet high. And when you walk a property that doesn't have a lot of space, especially downstairs, it can feel very congested. Um, and you can see why they're discounting that property so much because, you know, it's just not something that people are looking for. Now, whenever you're building a house, you have to think about the demographic of who you're serving. Anytime, you're that, anytime that you're in business in general, you need to think about who your audience is going to be. When I'm picking a location, when I'm picking a specific plan, who is the type of person that's going to be buying this type of house? Is it the first time home buyer who's a single man? Is it a wife and uh, kids? Is it a full family? Is it a family of five, family of four with the grandma coming soon? Like, what are the things that people are looking for? Why are you driving so slow? What are the things that people are looking for in this community? And so from there, you reverse engineer and put a plan together that works exactly for what they want. But when you have a place with a small living room downstairs and all the rooms are small and you market like such a big property, but when you go in there and it's just very underwhelming, people do not like that. And so that's the situation that we came across whenever it came to taking a look at this specific community over at Middlefield Village. Uh, we didn't really like that one. So we're gonna be going, well, we're done for today, but we're gonna be taking a look and seeing what else that they like on the MLS. They're gonna leave on Wednesday. I have another client coming in on Tuesday. So we're gonna see if we can try and fit them in tomorrow to see if there's anything that we can do while they're here. If not, I mean, it's no big deal. Um, they are gonna get linked up with one of my um, credit repair people because they asked me about credit repair. So we're gonna start working on that now. But I just want to show them kind of like what we have to offer here in Dallas. Not, I mean, it doesn't really take too much time to just show some people some houses. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So. That's it for today. Hope y'all liked everything here. Uh, I'll, I'll keep y'all updated on everything that goes on. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And then I'll see y'all on the flip side. Peace.